We're back for another podcast of Four Force Combat. I'm joined by my co-host Nathan. How are we doing, Nath? I'm good. I'm good. There's plenty, plenty going on in the fight world, not just UFC. So, so plenty to talk about, which I'm excited about. Absolutely. So we'll we'll start with the card tomorrow. UFC 303. What was supposed to be Conor McGregor, the return of the Mac versus Michael Chandler. I'll let you. I'll let you take the lead on this. Yeah, I'm, I mean, look, I mean, everyone's probably, I suppose, mainly the people that, that are going are disappointed because they'd have bought mm. those tickets hoping for, for Conor McGregor, yeah, yeah. Michael Chandler, and what we've been left with. You know, it's it's still, they've done well, they've scrambled well, they've pivoted well, and, and to a decent, to a really exciting fight, a really exciting main event, a great co main event. There's a couple of fights on, on the main card that would have been there anyway, but, yeah, yeah. you know, it's still, look, it's, you know, nothing else has fallen through that I can remember. So, it's been pretty good, you know. Yuri Prohachka versus Alex Pereira, the rematch. Um, that I mean, it's just a really exciting fight. Especially, yeah. it's the best you're going to get at light heavyweight, and I oh, mean, yeah. it's two guys who are just insane. I mean, Yuri Prohachka has been talking about how Alex Pereira is a shaman, you know, in the spirits. He uses the yeah, spirits. Yeah. And Alex yeah, Pereira yeah. hasn't hasn't. He's not denied it. He said, you know, yeah. I do. I don't know why you're not. No, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and so it, these are two just absolute characters that are just insane i mean to, with the fight itself i don't know i don't know how you feel going into it but i i kind of feel it only going one way in in this with alex Pereira winning but i mean it's just to watch it's still going to be incredible as the first one was yeah to, just to touch on um what you said about the the characters and stuff like that, i think the they've both got their individual personalities um which is good i think that i think that's also styles make fights but also the characters make the mm. fights as well so it it could be different, but I'm with you. I think it's going to be repeat. Um, and going back to it, should be McGregor Chandler the, as the main event. Um, the only disappointment it, it is obviously a massive disappointment, but another huge part of it is the ticket prices because people was paying the extravagant, over the top price. I mean, I know it's fight international fight week anyway, and the prices would have been higher than normal but when it's McGregor and Chandler and the yeah. hype and the build up and the, the amount of time that we've waited for this fight the prices were through the roof so I can understand the frustration from the fans that they've paid over the top prices and they're not getting what they originally thought that they was going to be getting um but yeah I I'm I'm with you on the 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 replacement main event, I think it's going to be repeat, and I, and I like that Alex uses all his spirits and and, and stuff like that. Good, good for him. Good, yeah. good for him. <laughs> Do right. You use anything you can to feel like you're going to get that extra edge. That's it. There's there's something so I actually think there's something quite cool about Yuri Prohachka, who seemingly knows all of this. You know, he uses these otherworldly spirits, but he's just going to go in and fight him using his you know techniques. He trains by kicking a tree. You know, I know he doesn't yeah. do that, but. You've seen his the guy is genuinely insane, but yeah. it is such a character, and, and I, I love watching him fight. And it, unfortunately, a part of why I love watching him fight is that he's quite hittable and tends to get into those those real wars, which doesn't quite benefit you against Alex Pereira. Obviously, he he managed still to to get to go to war with Alex Pereira, but the the the, the guy's too clinical. I mean, I just yeah, again, I, I can't see it see it going another way. With, with I mean, he's just I mean. One fight of Alex Pro is probably enough. Now, now the second one, I'm not sure if it's going to go even longer. It probably, I think it's going to be a shorter night for, for both. But I mean, at least that. I mean, ticket prices in UFC and, and TKO in general, because it happens with WWE as well. But they're they're a joke. They're so bad. Yeah. But I mean, at least I guess they're getting a really fun fight. Uh, you know, it's the only thing I can say. If the yeah, people I are just, willing to pay it, I, I just wonder if the quality is going to be a bit diluted. Because it's short notice. I don't, uh, not necessarily from Pereira, because I think we've touched on this before. It's like a Jorisel bunny. Like the, the guy yeah. could, the guy's fresh. So without having too much damage, he, he's one of them that, it, similar to the Muay Thai fighters, he could fight every week or every mm. every other week, you know. Um, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you said about Paul Tan being um, clinical. I think, I think that's, I think that's the best way that you can describe it. And, I think that's exactly the way it's going to be tomorrow. But I'm, like you said, Petraska is, is 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 a character himself. The the kicking of the trees and stuff, um, and he will stand in front of you and he'll he'll eat your punches. 
as long as he can throw some. But that, that, like you said, it's not going to go in his favour against someone as clinical as Pereira, is it? There's only so long that can work. I feel like yeah, there's there's a time where it'll happen. It happens for every fighter that sort of got a good chin. You know, eventually some some are lucky enough it stays, but a lot of the time it just it just happens and you know it goes. That one punch changes, and then all of a sudden you you can't quite mm. take those punches that same way. And and I mean, I'm hoping for for our sake to watch Prohachka fight like the way he does would be incredible. Hopefully, he carries on the whole career. But against Pereira, it, it could be could be the one. I mean. And, and they say that there aren't, it's not an incredible, incredible card. It's not, you know, stacked. You know, there's a, for some reason, let me just check. Yeah, there's a main card fight of Macy Chason versus Maria Brenner Silva, which is, you know, there, um, which isn't ideal. But you've got a, a really exciting co main event in Brian Ortega versus um, Diego Lopez, who is absolutely, yeah. you know, almost burst, burst, not burst on the scene because he's 24 and six, but he's he's just risen and come out of, yeah, come out of nowhere, well. really, as, as a short notice. I think it was short notice for the Ev- Evlyov fight. And then all of a sudden now he's, he's just put it together. And it's one of those guys who's been about for a while and he's finally just starting to put put those skills together. And now the biggest fight of his career against Brian Ortega, who, you know, is as game as the sort of guys who can take a punch and, yeah. and really get into those sort of fights. Brian Ortega's as game as they come. Yeah, he's, he's, been, around for, he's been around for quite a while, Ortega now, hasn't he? Uh, and it's, it was him that... Um, Tried to push for the permanent 300k bonus, wasn't it? Yeah, well, was last, last I'm, time. I'm with him. Yeah. I'm with him. I, I'm, I'm with him on it as well because the amount of money that the UFC generates, and then we see in podcasts Dana White going on about how much he spends at a poker table. It's like, well, give it, give it to you fellas then. Yeah, like, well, the guys fill, don't the money down. The most underpaid sports. I mean, we this probably conversation yeah. another day, really, but that. The, the MMA fighters is one of the most underpaid. It's probably combat, a general combat sports thing, but in terms of the money UFC makes or what they get, it's not. It's not. It's not on. But people are willing to accept it. So then, you know, what can you do sitting on the outside? Absolutely. But I, I, I do like Ortega though. He's took a bit of sticking, and the, the one funny moment that sticks out for me, I can't remember what podcast it was on, and the Holloway's talking and he's talking about his fight, and it's when he's he's lifted Ortega's hands and he's, he's, he's told him to put oh, them yeah, there. Told real. him to put them there. So I don't know who your coach is, bro, but you need to have your hands there so I, don't have to, so I can't hit you as much. But it's a tasty fight. It's I think I think it's a worthy co-main event with, without a shadow of a doubt. It's a fan-friendly it is. fight, isn't it? Yeah, Lopez is is really, really good. And also, you know, he's, he can go with the best. I mean, he was good on the ground against Evlyov, who is Russian. So that, that tells you enough. Ortega's really yeah, good on the yeah, ground. Absolutely, yeah. And, and they're both willing to, to throw and trade on, on the feet. So it's it's a fight. And it's probably also a fight with, with title implications as well. It depends what, where they go with Holloway. I assume that's the fight they want to make. But then after that, um, you know, that, that that's the next person. Or if, you know, Holloway ends up fighting someone else, McGregor or Chandler or whatever for, for the BMF thing, then you've all, you've got your ready-made to pour your opponent there. Yeah, I think, like you said, the ready-made to pour your opponent. But if, if, I think if Holloway was to beat to pour your, then the, it, they're going to want to do the BMF and the featherweight title fight with McGregor. So then it's like... Yeah. They're going to say it's like the first unification ever. Aren't they? Yeah. That's the way they go. That's the way that they sell it. And it, I think that fight sells its fucking self anyway. Don't it? even if there was no, no title yeah. on the line, you know. I, I think I, I don't know if there's a world where McGregor makes one forty five anymore. But so, no, so, no, 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 that, that, that is a big factor as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is a big. I think factor. it would have to be BMF only. Yeah, yeah. And if they could, I mean. But, I mean, we, we speak about McGregor. There is an Irishman on the card and, you know, mm-hmm. a controversial Irishman. Um, this fight is is really interesting one. Ian Gary versus MVP Michael Venom Page. I like it. I really like it. It's a, it's a real test for Ian Gary, but also it, it, for MVP as well. This is one yeah. of the toughest fights of his career. If you, if you actually look at the opponents he's faced, this is one of the hardest fights he's had. Absolutely. I'd, um, I think f- fair play to MVP as well because... I mean, there's no easy fights in the UFC, but he's been through straight in the deep end. Kevin Holland, and he looked really good against Kev. Mm. And um, he, a lot of people were backing him for the win. His opponent tomorrow night, Ian Garrett, said he, he said on record a few times <clears throat> that he didn't think MVP was going to win that. Um, but it's a real, real, real tasty fight. I, th- I think there's kind of 
a little bit of animosity there, but then we've also seen the clip of MVP and Gary with Gary's son as well, and they're getting along, yeah. and it's 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 all love. Um, but yeah, it's it's a real real tasty fight. The, the, to touch on more of the caliber of opponents, I mean, I don't think it's so much MVP's fault, but you only can fight and beat what's in front of you, and. Yeah. The promotions that he has fought on Bama and Bellator and stuff like that, the, the, the level of opponents aren't nowhere near the UFC, are they? Yeah. I think they, they see with MVP, MVP was like the highlight reel guy, you know, so they put yeah, him up yeah, against yeah. guys that you can get said highlight reel against. And then it was always weird, what, usually when when he was put up against, I mean, the, the weirdest thing is, what well, well, one, when he, he ended up being in a highlight reel on Douglas Lima's highlight reel with that yeah. incredible yeah. knockout. Scary um, knockout. Just create, just <laughs> insane knockout. But and then also he, when he when they fought, you know, when they tend to fight Douglas Lima, was it was it daily? He just had that awful yeah. fight with really boring. Um, but he is really good, and and obviously it actually tends to be a bit more of like a conservative fighter in in the sense of he's not someone that is going to go crazy, go go to the wall. But and that could benefit him in in this environment against Ian Gary, who you know, while he he's very composed, you know, there might be that urge to prove yourself and. You know, I need to get this knockout. I don't think that will happen, but he's shown that he can be really composed in those situations. And again, it's one of them, you know, a win for either guy. And, and you're looking at top five. You're not looking yeah. at title yet, but there, there's an easy top five fight there. And then with if MVP wins, there is there is that fight that might help him that he's English and Leon Edwards. You know, there is that link there. There might just be too many guys in the queue, but it it, it does have interesting permutations on it if if Michael Page can get the win and if Ian Gary wins it's just you know going to be more of the same the stocks rising absolutely I think it might be a bit cager for long periods because like you said Gary's really composed and MVP is not standing in front of you and let's have a fight sometimes he's quite composed yeah. himself like as we say Styles make fights or I think it might be cager for, for long periods but it's a real tasty fight not just for the Americans for us as well, it's it's the UK fight on UK Irish fight on the card for us, isn't it? So that that's obviously the main event appeals massively over here to the MMA fan, but for for everybody in general, that is the fight for for us on these shows, isn't it? Definitely, and I mean, sort of looking through the card, there, there's a few interesting fights. There's some some not so interesting fights. Andre Olovsky's <laughs> on it. Um, Charles Jordan's on it. He's always fun. There's a really fun fight between Cub Swanson and Andre Feely. A couple of veterans going at it. Joe Pfeiffer's back, which is, you know, Dana White's guy. Anthony yeah. Smith, Roma Delize, that's unfortunately on the main card. And then sort of the, probably the most interesting one, for me at least, is, is seeing this Peyton Talbot. He's been someone that's really been impressive recently, 8-0, and and he's just been on fire. Really <laughs> fun style, interesting style, someone that is going to get... And I mean, these, these pay-per-views, these prelim cards especially, they are the perfect way to launch because, I mean, I, I, can't, I don't know if he's fight pass or not, I hope he's on, on on the ESPN side of things for the American viewers and that. But these are the best launching pads for for a young fighter that that you know to get their name out there because they're going to be in front of a relatively big crowd. I know it's not going to be full for him, but some guy like Peyton Talbot, eight and zero, you know, marketable. This is a huge opportunity for him against um Yanis Gamori, who's you know a bit of an unknown quantity, but you know you don't know who could be it could be a really tough test and or could be that knockout that submission that that gets him to that next level. Absolutely, I, th I think like like you said, um, I hope it's on the prelims, um, because the Vegas time zone and um, everybody on different sides of the globe will either mm -hmm. won't be watching. They'll, they'll be they'll, they they won't be watching. They, they, sorry, they will be watching from early, won't they? They'll they'll have it on from yeah. when eleven o'clock, twelve midnight. It'll start here, so everybody will tune in, and that's. The fights That's that will be on it. first, so yeah. And then, sort of, if we if we pivot away from the UFC, we look at um, the Cage Warriors have, have announced their prize fighter. So, well, what we, what are your thoughts on that? The the draw for that because there's some interesting interesting fights on there. Yeah, I, I like the draw. I like the draw. Um, I really like Wesley Meyer um, after his first fight with Quadran. I was there. I interviewed him after it. It was a great fight as well. Um, and it's almost a year to the day, which makes it even more interesting. 366 yeah. days to be exact in the same venue. That's semi final one. Um, and it's Aiden, Stephen, and who was the draw now? Luth. 
Yeah, and like Alexander Luth. Now that's that's a really good fight as well. Alexander Luth was involved in fight of the year with Luke Riley. Everyone knows what he brings. His stand and bang. Um, he he doesn't run, and um, that's a really interesting fight. And the reserve fight is the all Italian affair. Um, Giordano and Martin Nona. Um, the only disappointment with the prize fight because he's, I know it's going to be electric. It's great. The only disappointment with it is. That there's no English lads on it, mm. and it's in England. It's in London, um, and we just to refer back to how underpaid they are. Cage Warriors is really underpaid. I know some fighters. This is no disrespect because it's just the way it is. But I know some fighters that have won world titles in Cage Warriors and not even made a thousand pounds, which wow. is shocking. I know. So yeah. you, you you're looking at this fifty thousand dollars which is about thirty nine thousand pound yeah. why can't that money be broken up a little bit i know the prize fight is all well and good it's a great concept but i'd love for that money to be broken up a little bit more so everybody gets a share of the pie a little bit and gets paid a little bit better yeah i think it, it sucks when I, I think with these gimmicks are great and you know the the fifty thousand if you go to octagon you know that million thing and, and that it's great but then it also makes you think well you, we i know it's sponsored but you've got the money you know let, yeah. let's give them a little bit more because they they deserve it there's there's probably not Absolutely. let's say there's not that many sports where where people are underpaid but mma is certainly one and I tell, yeah you just wish that the money's there and these guys are great and and they, they you know they're risking their their life to to entertain people so I, I just yeah i wish they got paid more i'm excited to see how this goes it's you know a one night concept which is which is fun you know, and it, obviously it, it could mean that the two Italian guys in the reserves, if one of them could wind up winning the, the 50,000, depending on how, how the fight goes. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's, it's going to be really interesting. And it's a, it's a concept that is starting to come back, I think. that I Maybe, I don't know if it's PFL inspired or, or what, but the, the sort of tournament, as we see with the game changer, that sort of big money win, um, it's starting to come back, and if you're a fighter, you should be going for it because these are the, the, you know, these are the times where you get, you will get paid a, a good amount. What probably, you know, maybe the million of what, of what you deserve might be stretching it, but it is that more, you know, that getting those big paychecks, which which every fighter dreams of. Absolutely, and the the other aspect to it is, it will make them come forward. I mean, it's going to suit the likes of Alexander Luth down to the ground this because they're going to want to impress. Um, I think it's going to be firefights, but also on the flip side, they're going to want to try and be composed and make sure they get through to the next fight unscathed. So I think mm. I think it'll be ta it could be very tactical as well. Um, Wesley Meyer, um, he's had five losses, but last year he had three wins and he had a big win against Quadram, and then he went to PFL and beat Lewis McGrillan, who's one of the best contenders prospects coming out of the UK. Um, so I think my early pick is Wesley for the whole win. But as you say, um, the reserve fight, um, they've got massive chances as well because if any, anything happens, like we say, any injuries or whatever, they're two, they're two real, real fighters then. And they're, they're both really looking forward to seeing who's the best in Italy as well. So, yeah, yeah I'm, re I'm, re I'm really fun. looking forward to the whole thing. I, ca I can't say that I'm not. Like we've touched on the money, the money side of it and the pay side of it. The, the, the whole thing... It's, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited. Yeah. And MMA, you know, built on these one night concepts, you know, back in the old yeah. school UFC when it was going, if you ever watch any of them, that's just absolutely insane, you know, how those fights went. It's just like, I know the Gary Goodridge one where he's just absolutely elbowing this guy to, to mm -hmm. almost near death. And but these one night things, I always think they like, boxing had a really good one. I can't remember what it was called. It, it, like, but, you know, it was one of those one night tournaments, the two round things. And they all, they're just always fun because, you know, you, you're going to find out a winner right there and then and nothing you know nothing can stop it so it, it's Absolutely going to be interesting yeah. i know there, there any other things happening on the region scene i know that's more sort of your your side of thing that you wanted to touch on yeah well as you know we we do interview quite a few regional fighters and stuff like that don't we we've, we've spoke to um, a good few amateurs as well um and fcc they've cemented their place as pretty much top dogs then you we've got ukfc almighty and stuff like that but um, two good friends of mine, um, Malachi on one side and Gav on the other side. So we've got Malachi with the M Fight League, who had his show in Manchester on the Saturday. Now he did 
what we've just been speaking about, a prize fighter for amateurs. That was a four-man tournament, and he, he paid a thousand pounds for the winner. I don't think I'm any amateur anywhere is getting paid that. So props to them. And the undercard was electric. It was at Wivenshaw Forum, which is well known and well renowned for a great venue for small hall and amateur. So that was a massive success. They that's only Malachi's third show. Malachi and his brother. That's only their third show. Um, and they're really establishing themselves. There's I've not seen one little bit of bad feedback. So props to them guys and Kingdom. They think they're on their sixth. That was their sixth or seventh show on Liverpool in Liverpool on the Friday. And they they're putting some extremely good fights on. Really, really good fights. And They've never had a bit bad feedback, neither. Um, they're really establishing themselves. Um, they do well on pay per view. They do well with tickets. Um, and for the next show, they've announced Callum Mullen versus Tony Silver. I think it is who they've got. They've got a really good reputation, as you know. Callum just fought Dennis Frimpong. He's never been stopped in his career. Tony Silver's a great fighter as well, um, and they're really well known in the UK. So for them. For Kingdom to get them to on the next show, that's a massive statement and further further proves my point that they are really establishing themselves on the regional scene. So props to all them guys and long may it continue. Yeah, it's, it's well, I mean, you you know you gen you'll know this from experience. It, it it's not easy to to run a show. So to to be you know to do it with, with no bad because usually you'd assume there'd be maybe one or two that are slightly peeved with whatever's gone on you know even not if you're a bad promoter or anything like that so that must be a really good sign especially for, for uk and mma which in the mma industry which can be a little you know known to be a little bit sleazy that these guys yeah. they're just doing it and they're doing it the right way and, and they're getting fights out there that are fun and entertaining for the fans yeah, bang on. And on the flip side like you just said that it can some can be a bit sleazy <clears throat> there was a show last week don't know if you've seen Armand, Dennis and Liam Etabar. Um, they all fought on it, Trixel Combat or something like that. Some bullshit show in Coventry. Now, I don't think Dennis and everybody was aware of the the, the how low of a calibre of, <clears throat> of opponents they'd be facing. But Liam Etabar, for example, he kicked his opponent once. The fight was over. Within five seconds, yeah. Yeah. it looked like the, the poor lad who got kicked looked like he'd never took a kick before in his life. They don't even look like amateur fighters, some of them. They looked like white collar fighters. Um, and the lads that they were promoting it also fought, put themselves on the show, fought on the show, um, knowing who they was facing. They was facing like kids with zero and three yeah. records and shit like that. Um, they've had a lot of stick for it. Um, there's a there's a new account on Instagram. I can't remember what it's called. MMA promotion shockers or something like that. Props to him because he's calling them out. He's been quite relentless with it and more of it because we 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 can't be having this in mixed martial arts. For one, I think we've got just about the right amount of regional shows anywhere. UKFC, F, the FCC, etc. They are the ones that I mentioned previously. We don't need shit like this. We don't need garbage like this. It's gonna it's gonna put the sport and the regional scene in disrepute so i hope that we don't see it again and i hope that the backlash from it makes them realize what they've done i don't think they care because they've been arguing with people saying oh you don't know the story and da -da 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 -da. people do know the story they see it for what it is the footage is there the evidence is there so don't talk shit do you know what i mean like, fuck yeah. that. We don't want it. We don't want it. it, it this this isn't tiddlywinks, Nathan. This is the fucking fight game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. People's lives yeah. are at risk. Like, these four-ounce yeah. gloves, they're not Angry. to protect your opponent. They're to protect your hands. You know, it's... it's, it's, it's it, MMA is the closest thing to bare knuckle, isn't it? You know? With that, with, that, that's it. It's it's pathetic, yeah. It's it's yeah. pathetic. We don't want to see any more of that. There's a there's a, a fun if people are interested in that sort of thing. I, it's, I think it's on Sherdog where they they talk um, about like certain like dodgy events and how they, there's a guy who's the guy that does the record. They um, they they investigate and they find all these crazy things that promoters pull to to try and pad up records. I mean, famously last year there was a guy in the UFC who who came in with like a twenty and six record and wound up with a 
18 and 12 or 13 record and, and then got sort of embarrassed in his fight. So these things are just useless because, you know, if you're fighting people with like that padded and you're trying to promote yourself, obviously, if you've been drawn into the card, that's unfortunate. But if, you know, certain people, it's not going to help them. No. It's just, you know, especially if you're trying on the come up. So, yeah, that there needs to be less of that because, you know, it, it's just pointless and, and no one wants to watch a fight where, you know, no, why people get bored by Man City, they're not going to win every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It wasn't even it, for this trip, so it wasn't just even the quality of the fights as well. The commentary team lacked a lot of information, they got a lot wrong, they sounded depressed, blah, 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 blah. and that transfers onto the viewer. If you're tuning in and you're seeing this, you're going to turn it straight off. Um, so I just want to say that the fighters can only beat what's put in front of them in terms of Dennis and the other lads, and fair play to the referee because he stopped it as soon as he could. Now, he couldn't have stopped it any later. Um, and it's fair criticism from everybody, and this is why people have to accept that it. it's right that Khabib had fair criticism, because he was fighting guys that were like 6 and 3 when he was 12 and 0, 13 and 0 and stuff like that. Now, that's not how... It's, especially a guy that used to wrestle Bears when he was fucking 10 years old and this big Dagestani fucking yeah. wrestler, this this killer, this animal, that everybody knew how good he was, but his record was padded to to an extreme sense, you know, and it's fair right. criticism. They've got to take it on the chin. They've got to take it on the chin. You know, it's fair criticism. Yeah, ho I'm hopefully, hopefully less lesson learned for them. And I mean, not to be, to bleat on about, you know, promotions that maybe could have done certain things better and handled things better. I mean, What's happened with Octagon? It was it, it was unfortunate because obviously we we love Octagon. It, it's it is genuinely yeah. a fantastic promotion, yeah. but unfortunately not. You know, again, there's there's missteps that people make. Ever even if you love them, you still have to say not sure why that's happened. I mean, they're unfortunate. Lima, he's gone to the UFC, took his chance. We were going to come and talk about the Saudi car, unfortunately didn't happen. But he, what an incredible performance for him and and really taking that, that risk and it paying off. Yeah. But it has left sort of that main event um in in a bit of disregard. And now, is it Jonas? Jonas Magard. He's now on. Yeah. Magard. He's he's now on the prelims. He he was going to main event the card. He's now on the prelims against. Is it Josh Hill with an American fighter? Yeah, Canadian um, fighter. I think it is. Or Canadian, sorry. Yeah, and so I mean, yeah. I mean, what do you what do you think of it? Because it is a bit strange to to go from the main event to to get docked down to the prelim. Yeah, no yeah. Um, a, a Slovakian bloke messaged me, and he made a good example that after Prochaska lost to Pereira. He was on the prelims of 300. Now, that's the, the, the now with the, the UFC is the UFC, and there's always been a, a, a few dodgy things. But in terms of Octagon, who were seriously struggling to match the UK fighters, but I'll touch on that later. I think the F, the lack of effort, and now we, like you said, Nate, we love Octagon. The, we, we, we do, we, we love Octagon as a promotion. But I think the lack of effort on Jonas's part to get him another worthy opponent. Now, the number two, I can't pronounce his second name. He's a German fella. Um, I've been told directly that they've both said to the top brass at Octagon that they want the fight. So no, number one ranked Jonas Magard against um, number two ranked. Um, they, they said that they'd fight it's still a good few weeks away for some strange, bizarre reason. Octagon didn't want it, which I find astounding because wouldn't that be happening anyway? Number one yeah. versus number two for the vacant belt. So I really feel for Jonas because in January, when he fought Jack Cartwright, that main event in Newcastle was promoted to an extreme level. They blew social media up. Um, McGard's a really, really markable fighter. He talks the talk, he walks the walk. So he's gone from being shoved in everybody's face, being promoted to a high level, getting this title shot in a rematch against Lima, more wet, wet, really deserved, to not even having his promoters put the effort in to try and mix, make sure he still gets that title opportunity. If if he wasn't going to do it for Bratislava next month, then maybe, because the fella's German, the number two ranks German, maybe they could have said to Jonas, 
right? So we've here's here's a here's um an opportunity to fight in the stadium show in Frankfurt for the vacant title against the German fellow and just don't fight on the Bratislava card. So you'll still fight for the title, but two months later, you know? Yeah. I think there was more options, a lot more options and a lot better options than him having him fight on the prelims. I don't think I don't think he deserves to be on the prelims anyway. I think he should be on the main card. But the the one thing that is good for Jonas is he can fight early, get it out of the way, and then he can enjoy the rest of the event. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, look, he took the fight, so you know, there's an extent that he, he's going to do it. He's going to he's going to you know, hopefully for him win. And then you know, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know much about his opponent and a bit of an unknown quantity, but he's been around positive record, so. You know that that all both you know could be a really great fight, could be a fun fight that that takes place free to air. You know, so it, yeah, it's just it's just yeah, it's just weird. I mean, the perhaps one's a bit different though. I think with that that example, just because it was UFC 300, so that there was a yeah. whole emphasis on making sure every and I, I think they were just trying. I think the only reason perhaps was on the prelims was because they were sort of trying sort of shoehorning Bo Nickel into a main card sort of if I remember that correctly, but I might mm. might be wrong on that. Um, the yeah, it's it's, it's a strange one, but again, it. That criticism comes from a, from a place of love, I guess, because you know, yeah. if you're any promotion, it, you 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 have to sort of. They are going to make they are going to make mistakes, and there's things that you're just not going to be that happy with. And they've made their decision. He's going to fight on the prelims on, on what will still be you know a fun card. I think they've got the other half of the the tip sport game changer stuff on there, and and so there's going to be lots lots going on, on on that card. Yeah, but yeah, just a, a weird weird drop to to go from the main of, especially for Octagon, or a guy that you might be your champion in you know by the end of 2024 absolutely absolutely and the the, the way they're struggling to match the uk fighters i've i've not, never seen anything like it now everybody there's been one announcement for one uk fighter corey fry so mm-hmm. with like we've had dennis frimpong arman herzeg and leah metaba they fought on that shit show trixel event Octagon should be looking at that saying, wow, we really need to do more. Our lads shouldn't be fighting on there, especially the likes of Dennis Frimpong, who does astronomical views. He's got an elite skill set for everybody to see. They should not, I repeat, they should not be having to go on, go and fight on not just the regional scene, but the lowest of low of the regional scene. Um, I was with Matthew Bonney yesterday. I'm going to put that interview on after this podcast um he was offered chepo at middleweight he took it he didn't get any feedback chepo's now fighting on the bratislava card um who else is there shemrock as we know was struggled to be matched up until he up until the catacoli fight um who else is there everybody basically everybody because they've only had one announcement so proofs in the pudding i don't know what's going wrong if these Czech, Slovak and German fighters are all just saying no or Octagon are putting enough effort. At the, morning, at the end of the day, more needs to be done, especially yeah. when they've got, a, they've got a big roster in Czech Republic and Slovakia and the roster's growing in Germany. They've signed all these UK and Irish fighters, but they can't match them. Now, it's frustrating from our side because we are from these shores but it's even yeah. more frustrating from from for the fighter, you know, especially for the likes of Matthew Bonner, who's in next gen. And he said, everybody's getting fight dates there. Now, literally everybody's got fight dates. Everybody from Paddy, Molly, uh, Matthew Camilleri's got his fight date. Shem's had two fights in the last seven weeks. Francis Breen, Connor Wilson, um, Adam Cullen's back out. Nathan Fletcher's just been on the contender series. Or was it on the ultimate fight? The ultimate fighter, sorry. Um, so Matthew's going into training three or four days a week with a lot less intensity because he's not got a fight date. Now he Matthew's in a position where he wanted to go back down to welterweight. He can make it comfortably, um, but he wants to stay in a position where if Octagon offered him an opportunity at welterweight or middleweight, he can take it. But there's nothing coming to fruition, you know. And Matthew's. Yeah putting himself in a position where I can he can fight in two divisions. It's just a frustration. And it's frustrating for us because we want our boys 
to be matched and we want them to succeed and we want them to be on these 28k shows and these 58 55k shows you know it's it's really frustrating and like like you like you said nathan it's coming from a place of love you know because we love octagon we want them to succeed and we want our lads to succeed don't we yeah i i guess the only thing maybe it's thing is it's it's june so it doesn't really work you know they're they're waiting out for the uk show in 25 but I mean that that's not going to work. Far away. These guys, these guys, these guys, this is their lives, you know. It's so. too far away. Matthew said it to me. Matthew yeah. said it to me yesterday. So he's not. Uh, he's had. I think it was one or two offers since January. He last fought in January. Matthew's been extremely active in his career. I think he fought seventeen mm-hmm. times in Cage Warriors. Now this is the longest period of time in his entire career that he's not had a fight. Now that yeah, is, yeah, can be cool. really frustrating. We also touched on the facts of would he be able to go and fight on another promotion i don't think octagon will allow him to go back to cage warriors or go on pfl because they're seen as rival shows so they'd only i think they'd only facilitate on a regional show and matthew bonner is his is nickname the beast he is a fucking beast he is top quality he's one of the best grapplers on the uk scene he's ranked he was ranked uk number one at middleweight for so long ranked number one at welterweight um, so we don't want. We, we, he's not going to go and fight on these regional shows, you know. It's it's no. a. We talk about drop down in levels now. That'd be a criminal drop yeah. down in <laughs> level for someone like him to go on a regional show. It's becoming. I don't know. I, maybe this is starting to become. Maybe it's always been a thing. Probably has, but it, it feels like a more common thing. I think Bellator have had this with Musasi leaving or PF, yeah, Bellator yeah. PFL. They that Musasi literally threatened legal action over it, and I think it's probably happened in the UFC as well. Like. I, I feel like there is an example of that, but I can't think of the exact person. But the people saying, "Look, I'm here," they're just not offering me nothing, mm-hmm. and, and you know, and that, that must be a really frustrating point as a fighter, especially if you, when you're in a gym with lots of people who are training to fight, and and you know, you're just there, like you know, yeah, I'm sure I still love it, but wh- where's my fight? Where's my you know, where when can I get into it and obviously earn some money out of this? So it, you know, it, it's a frustrating. Time. So, yeah, it's just it's strange why have them if you're not going to ha- offer fights. You know, there almost needs to be guarantees in these things that, that you're going to get a certain amount every Absolutely. every you know every year. Absolutely, and I think a lot of fighters now that as the more the frustration goes, they're going to be going back to the managers and speaking to him, asking them to go through that contract with a fine tooth comb, because if they're not offering them them fact like you referred to Musasi with illegal action, they'll be able they'll find something that they'll be able to tear the contract up and walk away. Now that the octagon can't can't really argue with that because if you if you're struggling to match them and you're not offering them fights for seven, eight months at a time, they're gonna want to look elsewhere. They're gonna need to look out elsewhere. These guys need to fight. They've got families, they've got bills to pay, they've got mortgages, you know. Yeah, exactly exactly. And and so I mean <laughs> Octagon, come on. Yeah. It's, come on, lads. it's like, from a place get, of love. Get, we want to see these guys fight, you know, and I'm sure sure you guys do too. When you know, the, I mean, obviously, such success on on things like the challenge was it challenge? Oh God, I can't remember. But yeah, yeah, yeah that was the, those, those things, yeah. So I mean, hopefully, Octagon can sort of get their ideas up with, with that, and hopefully, they can you know have a great card in in Bratislava. I mean, really exciting fight week. Still got those UFC fights coming up. Can't wait for them. Is, is there anything going on sort of regionally as, in terms of like coming up close this weekend or next weekend? Um, I think there's a couple of shows. Um, I can't think off the top of my head. I did. I did have plans to go to one tomorrow in Liverpool. I think that's. Um, I can't even think of it off the off the top. Of my yeah, head. put you on a spot there. Sorry. Yeah, I can't think <laughs> of it off the top of me because there's that many now, and there's that many good ones that you want to be. You want to be seeing how these lads are doing, and you want to be going to these shows, you know, because the, because the good the good quality. And I'm 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 a big admirer of the UK regional scene. I think I think if you can't support them when they're first starting out on these regional scenes, then you shouldn't be supporting them when they're at the high level. You know, if you back, back them from the start. One of them in it. Back them from the start. More, more rewarding. And we've got the the Dan and Matt Matt Bonner interviews. I think. Dan Bonner's got a fight booked now, a Mu- Muay Thai fight. Am, am I yeah. right in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I got a tingle tingle through my body when he got an announcement because the poor bastard 
did his full weight cut, I think it was about 18 months ago, 14 months ago in Australia, did his full weight cut day before the fight, it got cancelled or on the day, it got cancelled for the coveted WBC super middleweight title. Now, for a Muay Thai fighter, that's that's one of the belts, if not the belt, that you want to win. So I'm absolutely over the moon for him. And just to touch on Muay Thai a little bit more, Octagon, to break into the market a little bit more, I think maybe, maybe they could look at putting some Muay Thai um, fights on. Dan Bonner was in agreement with me yesterday because they've not just held MMA um, fights, they've had boxing fights on as well. So why not? Why, Especially why Muay Thai is going like that in the UK. It, it might help them break the market a little bit more. I went to a Hitman Fight League show at the start of the year and it had a um, it had a one championship feel to it. It was packed from the before the first fight. It was packed. It with the production was like a one championship fight. There was thousands and thousands there in bowlers crammed in, um, and I think Octagon should look at that and think, hmm, maybe, maybe, you know. I think I, th yeah, I think I think it could help them out. To be perfectly honest. Now, there is a lot of MMA in the UK, and, and so yeah, if you if you can sort of look to be like, look, we don't just offer that, you know, here yeah. where we can give you more. more time. I know one have a bit have to have a bit of a stranglehold on sort of the the best of the best fighters, but there, there's you know there's going to be incredible like people like Dan that are you know fighting for that chance to be there, and I mean platform them in front of a you know a nice arena. We we sort of discussed that if Octagon can sort of focus in on on the guys that are, are the big sellers in the UK, people like Shamrock, and you can sell out an yeah. arena, a smaller, maybe in more intimate setting, not quite Indigo bigger than that, but, you know, something a bit, not not quite so ambitious, and just find something that, because it always looks better when you've sold out a, a venue, it always just feels better, the atmosphere's more there, especially in a more quiet setting, and Muay Thai is such a fan-friendly sport, it, it, you know. Oh, yeah. It, people, you know, even me, I don't know a whole lot about Muay Thai, but it's always fun to watch, it's always, you know, when, whenever one do their, their, their Friday fights and stuff, you know, you you have to check it out because they're just fun fights. And, and you know, I mean, Britain have one of the best fighters in, in, in Jonathan Haggerty. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, I agree. I agree. It could be a really good way for them to break into a really crowded market. in, in the Absolutely. UK. And if we look at the lads and lasses that are in the one championship now from these shows, we've got Liam Harrison, who is a stalwart and an absolute legend in the UK, the Haggerty brothers, um, Nico Carrillo, and the, it doesn't, everybody's been crying out for it for a long, long time for the one championship to come over here. Now, as we know, they do grappling, submission, MMA, Muay Thai. Octagon could be the one championship of Europe if they was to, if they was to use it to help them break into that market. I, I think it's a great idea. I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but I think it's a great idea personally. Yeah, and then an Octagon can actually make money as well. So it's a bit different from one championship because I have no idea how they're still in business. But then, if, if you think that's a good idea, you know, let us know. Let us know. Maybe yeah. get us on the team. We yeah. can help out. So, yeah, I mean, so much to look forward to, especially on here on Full Force Combat. Dan Bonner, Matt Bonner, interviews coming out. A lot of um, stuff with some amateur fighters as well just dropped today on the Instagram. Um, yeah, they're, they're Dan's my Thai fighters. They're all they're all at different classes, all at different stages of the career. So um, while I was there yesterday, I just did a couple of minutes with them, um, getting to know them. They've they've all got fight dates, uh, and they've all got aspirations to be world champions. Dan said to me, he said, at some stage when their career is all said and done, all their belts in the gym. They want all their belts going and they want all their fighters' belts in the gym. And they can say, look, these are all our world champions, which that is the perfect attitude to have. The perfect attitude to have. That is, yeah, that is great. I, and, then, and there's so much to, to come on here. So make sure you're tuned in Full Force Combat on Instagram. Niche Sports still on YouTube, I believe. So make sure you're watching. If you're on YouTube, leave us a like. Subscribe. <laughs> it's a very turned very professional all of a sudden. Follow the Instagram as well. So, <laughs> so we'll all see that you. Cheers, Nathan. Thank you, brother. Thank you.